everyone now today we are going to start with the ratio analysis practical problems we are going to understand that how to solve this practical problems of ratio analysis so i have taken a sum from the university question paper of april 2014 they have asked you that they have given you a detail of income statement and position statement and you have to compute this seven formulas as we have discussed in the previous session that usually they will ask you the seven to eight formulas and this question will be for the 15 marks if you are going to write down all the seven formulas correctly you are going to get minimum seven marks and maximum eight marks and for the computation if you are going to do the computation you can score the 15 out of 15 marks and scoring the 15 out of 15 marks is so much easy now i have divided this question over here on the three pages so with the help of this we can solve the sum easily so now they have given you a income statement over here as well as they have given you a position statement that is your balance sheet now we are going to start with solving the sum now the first one they have asked you about the debt equity ratio now debt equity ratio is having a formula is of debt divided by equity we have studied that in the previous session itself now as we have discussed in the previous session that always this ratio amounts you will get from your balance sheet and for that you have to search the amount in the uppermost part of your balance sheet now please remember that what will come in your debt 8% term loans 9% debentures that is debt and equity share capital and reserves and surplus is the part of your equity so we have written over here that term loans plus debentures is your debt and equity share capital and reserves and surplus is your equity now the amount of term loan is of rupees 2 lakhs and debentures we are having worth rupees 1 lakh 20 thousand and equity share capital we are having is of rupees 4 lakhs and reserves and surplus we are having the worth of rupees 2 lakhs so we have just mentioned it as it is then we have added this 2 lakhs plus 1 lakh 20 thousand plus so it will be 3 lakh 20 thousand and 4 lakh plus 2 lakhs it will be the 6 lakhs now we have divided it 3 lakh 20 thousand divided by 6 lakhs it will be 0 0.53 as we have discussed that this is the pure ratio so whatever will be the answer that you have to write down as is to 1 now the next one they have asked you in a question that we have to compute the current ratio now for the current ratio we are having a formula is of current assets divided by current liability again in the previous session we have discussed that this amounts you can get from your position statement or your balance sheet and you have to search this amount at the end of the balance sheet so now the debtors is of rupees 80,000, stock is of rupees 2,98,000 and cash worth rupees 22,000. All this nothing but your current assets and creditors and outstanding expenses is your current liabilities. So straightforwardly they have given you a total of your current asset as well as the current liabilities. So simply what we are going to do in a current assets we are directly going to write down this total of rupees 4 lakhs and in case of the current liabilities already we are having the total of 2 lakh 80 thousand this as it is we are going to write down it over here so 4 lakhs divided by 2 lakh 80 thousand it will be 1.42 is to 1 now the next one is proprietary ratio now the proprietary ratio the formula is proprietors funds divided by total assets into 100 whenever it is into 100 the answer will come in a percentage now again in a smarter manner i have explained you in the previous session that proprietors funds means nothing but whatever you have taken in the equity part so your proprietors funds directly we are going to write down the same thing that is equity share capital plus reserves and surpluses we are having the total of that is of rupees 6 lakhs so we are going to write down directly it is as your 6 lakhs rupees now what will come in your total asset 
in a total asset there will be the fixed assets investment and your current assets again i am going back to the question in case of this total asset all the things will come there there will be the net fixed assets there will be the investment which they have not given you in this question and your current asset so just there is a smarter way to remember that in case of the application funds you will get all this details about the total of funds only you have to take down each and everything whatever they have given you in a application of fund except your current liabilities so we are going to write down your fixed assets plus investment plus your current assets now you are having the fixed asset worth rupees 8 lakhs investment they have not given you so i am not i am not going to write down it over here current assets already we are having is of rupees 4 lakhs the fixed assets we are having is of rupees 8 lakhs and current asset is of rupees 4 lakhs so it will be 6 lakhs divided by 12 lakhs in 200% the total is of the 50% i hope that you have understood all this three ratios now the next one is we have to compute the stock to working capital ratio again this is the balance sheet ratio so all this amounts you are going to get from your balance sheet now closing stock you will get in the current assets the closing stock they have given you is of rupees 2 lakh 98000 and we require the working capital working capital is nothing but your current assets minus current liabilities now the closing stock you will get in your current assets they have given you it is of rupees 2 lakh 98000 and the current liabilities directly you can get into the last column over here that is is of rupees 1 lakh 20000 so it is 2 lakh 98000 minus divided by 1 lakh 20000 in 200 so stock to working capital ratio is of 248.33 percentage again please remember that there is a one smarter trick to remember all this details working capital if you are a non comma student till the 12th standard and you are not still comfortable with this term then please apply the smarter way to remember always just check out your position statement or your balance sheet statement balance sheet the last total you will always have this total so what you have to do first you have to search this total and then you have to search the next amount to this so after the total you are having one amount that will be always your working capital that is a smarter way to remember for the non commerce student so closing stock you will get in your current assets and the working capital that will be your second last amount in your position statement or your balance sheet now the next one is operating ratio for this the formula is cost of goods sold cogs stands for cost of goods sold plus operating expenses divided by net sales in 200 as we are already aware that this is the income statement ratio so all this amounts we are going to get from your income statement now over here they have already given you a cost of goods sold is of rupees 10 lakh 20000 this we have written it as it is operating expenses they have given you is of rupees 3 lakh 90000 as it is we have copied it and the net sales is your total sales they have given you that is rupees 17 lakhs please remember that this is the simple term, sum so we are not having any cash sales and credit sales so that's why your net sales is straight forwardly whatever the amount of sales they have given you in 200 so the operating ratio is of 82.94 percentage now the next one they have asked you regarding the debtors turnover ratio the formula for that is credit sales divided by average debtors plus average bills receivable now over here they have already given you a sales sales we have already taken is of rupees 17 lakhs now the average debtors means the amount of debtors 
this amount you will get in your balance sheet now i have not returned a average bills receivable because they have not provided it in this question but actually it is average bills receivable so 17 lakhs divided by 80000 the answer will be 21.25 times always remember that debtor's turnover ratio and creditor's turnover ratio we are expressing in times now the next one is debtor's collection period the formula for that is 365 days or 52 weeks or 12 months divided by debtor's turnover ratio this is the most easiest thing which you are going to compute whatever the answer you are having over here this is your debtor's turnover ratio so simply what you have to do 365 divided by 21.25 so it will be 17.18 days because for the days the formula is 365 days divided by debtor's turnover ratio now the next one is in case of the weeks your formula is 52 divided by the same answer so it is 2.45 weeks now in case of the months it is 12 divided by the same answer so it will be 0.56 month now the next one they have asked you regarding your net profit ratio so for that the formula is net profit after tax divided by net sales into 100 as we have discussed earlier that always in case of the income statement whatever will be your last amount that is your net profit after tax so the last amount in case of without adjustment sum is of rupees 2 lakhs so we have taken 2 lakhs as it is the net sales means the amount which they have given you at the start whenever it is a simple sum so 2 lakhs divided by 17 lakhs into 100 it is 11.76% i hope that you have understood regarding the ratio analysis and you have understood the one more thing that this is not the difficult chapter at all everything they have given you in the question itself you have to just find out that amount you have to do simple multiplication yes but you have to remember the 12 formulas also all these formulas the sum along with the solution i have given on my website i have given the link of my website in the description box thank you so much